Okay, so I have two kids who are very excited about whatever arrived today. And they're gonna help me open my doll. We don't know what it is. Maybe it's your doll. Yeah, it is Sophie. Maybe. Hang on. Let me just, hang on. There, okay. You got it. I got it. I can't wait to see it. <gasps> Bloody Red Hood! <laughs> oh. OMG, she looks so pretty. I'll put all this stuff down. Okay, so first I'm going to show you the box that she comes in. It's really pretty. It's like a deep red color with gold patterns on it. There's the other side. And there's the back instructions on it. I'm going to open her up. Hi guys, Tracy here and I'm going to share my Bloody Red Hood doll, my pull-up doll which I received earlier this week. And um, this is the, I'm just going to tack this onto the, the first part of my unboxing video. After I got her and unboxed her, I had to leave her here in my craft room for a while all by herself. And uh, it's Thursday now so I'm back and I thought I would share her with you guys. So this is what she looks like up close. She has... Um, beautiful face up that's very smoky and her eyes like the smokiness around her is around her eyes is gray and so um, she has like when you look at her from a distance she has very big round kind of innocent looking eyes I mean all pull-ups have really big eyes but her eyes look even bigger and the reason that they look so big and innocent is because of the way that the makeup is done so you see that it has like a thick outline around here and it also has like thick I'll close her eye for a second here it also has um, like a thick line around here and that just makes her eye look bigger and rounder than uh, what a lot of pull-ups look and then um, you see that there's some shading right here on the outside that and it's in gray it's very beautiful and then there's also some shading here on the inside also gray and then a line that goes up kind of diagonally in the crease of her of her um, of her eyelid and then she has very she doesn't have any any um, lashes painted on up here but she does have this little flare um, I'll open her eyes so that you can it's hard to find her eye pegs inside of her hood um, and then on the bottom she does have some lashes painted on and a little bit of blushing underneath of the lashes and she has fairly pale skin with some blushing on her cheeks I'm not sure if that's going to show up in the video or not um, my lighting is very harsh in here I do scrapbooking videos so I have to kind of have it very bright for people to see my papers her lips um, are not the kind of lips that have lines on them. They're just smooth and shiny and they're darker in the middle and the color is like a um, It's a pinky. It's a purpley pink. It's almost like a wine color. I guess you might call it <clears throat> Her eye chips are purple They're a dark color of purple 
so from a distance they just look black but when they catch the light you can tell that they're purple um, her eyes do move and they are a really rich color of purple and her eyeshadow is beautiful purple very pretty her eyebrows are really interesting so her eyebrows have um, burgundy lines on them and brown and so I'm going to take her off her stand so that I can show you guys here we go her stand is clear which is you know kind of nice it kind of disappears I had her on my shelf and and I like how that how she looks with the clear stand um, so I'm going to take off her hood and I think I might show you the hood first so the hood is really beautiful put her down like that the hood is really beautiful and well made it's lined with a black cotton fabric there's kind of a lot of little linty things in it that's just because it's new and I haven't you know, taken the time to pick all the lint off of it yet um, so it's it's lined in a black cotton and then the outside of it is a um, it looks like velvet it's kind of shiny like velvet but I think it's more of a velour it has a really nice um, ruffled detail all the way around the edge of it it's not just around the hood it goes the whole way around the whole garment and it also goes all the way around the collar and it's really well made like the sewing is beautiful and um, well well done <clears throat> That's the underside of the collar. And then it also has this really pretty cream colored cotton lace. I'll give you a little bit of a close up of it. It has a little fake leather buckle. It's like a faux leather kind of um, material with a cute little buckle. And um, then the way that it closes is with one of these hooks. And as pull up often does, this hook, rather than hooking into the metal companion piece that often goes with these hooks, usually has like a little circular half circle piece that's sewn on the other side. Instead of that, it hooks into these teeny little pieces of black thread. So that's the hood. It's really beautiful. I'll talk about her hair just because I want to because I love her hair. Um, Bloody Red's hair is... A beauty, I, I have to say, first of all, I absolutely love her hair. It still has a bit of a kink in it from being in the packaging, which kind of held it like that. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful. I love the color of it. It's like a rich burgundy brown color. It's not brown at all. It's a rich burgundy color. It's very, very long. It goes down to almost to her heels. So it's very very long um, and the quality of this hair this is my favorite kind of pull-up hair it is a I'm I describe it as dry it's like a dry hair it's very kind of um, dry I guess is the only thing that I can say about it it's quite thin so um, it's it's thinner than I was expecting it to be but it is absolutely beautiful and it falls very beautifully and um, it's just a gorgeous gorgeous texture and this hair feels a whole lot like real people hair like human hair and it feels like human hair and it acts a lot like human hair like when I drop it it kind of spreads out it really does remind me very much of human Certainly hair. It feels very soft. Um, I'm going to compare it to Allie's hair because Allie has a similar hair and then I'm also going to compare it to Luna's hair whose style is similar but the hair is very different so let me grab those two dolls. So Allie's hair is also what I would describe as dry and it kind of falls in a natural way like human hair does. Bloody Red's hair is very similar to Allie's hair with the exception of Allie's hair is quite full and thick uh, whereas um, Bloody Red's hair is very, very, very thin. Now, I was expecting her hair to be more like Luna's, and I'm very happy that it's not because I am not a fan of Luna's hair. Luna's hair 
is not very natural at all, not very natural looking at all. I mean, obviously the color is not very natural looking, but it also has a real plasticky feel to it, and it comes to an abrupt end, and all of the edges of her hair are like squared off, whereas with Bloody Red, the edges of her hair are more tapered. And so <clears throat> this hair is a lot more plasticky. It's a lot more kind of like bunching up together and it seems more like doll hair, which I mean it is, right? But um, it's just the other problem that I've had with Luna's hair is that it, um, with, her, with anything that is the material of her stock skirt, um, <clears throat> which is that really thin, flimsy kind of uh, satin, which I actually took her stock skirt off of her because her hair was ruining it. Her hair was getting stuck in the satin of the skirt and picking it, and just the hair. The hair was sharp enough to pick the skirt and it was kind of ruining the edges of the skirt. So I took her skirt off. Plus it doesn't look so great with her obitsu body. It's kind of like a little off scale so I put this little Barbie denim skirt on her anyways this is not really about Luna but I just wanted to kind of compare Bloody Red's hair just so that if you have either of the other two dolls you have a comparison um, or if you've seen the other two dolls um, Bloody Red's hair is sort of um, it's a lot it's a lot nicer than Luna's hair even though the style is very similar in that it's very long and very straight um, I much much prefer Bloody Red's wig. It's gorgeous. Okay, so that's the quality of her hair. I do want to mention that her wig show, her wig um, netting shows in several places. Uh, you can see it there. Her wig cap is dyed burgundy, so you can't, it doesn't really stand out all that much, um, but it is, it definitely shows in the crown of her head in particular. But it doesn't show at the angle in which you'd usually be looking at her, so that's a good thing. Also, um, one thing that I've noticed is that her wig cap is not really on straight. So you see her forehead over here, and then it's kind of dips down right here. So it's kind of like off like that or something. It's still, I mean, her hair still sits the way that it should. It's just that the her forehead is a little weird. Oh, I also wanted to mention that her lips have a little black line inside of them that turns up to make a little tiny smile for her. So that's a nice, a nice little touch. So we'll, we'll talk about her stock outfit. I'll take off her purse and show you that. <clears throat> I have taken some pictures of her so I kind of feel like I'm more familiar with her than I was with some of the other dolls when I did my first impressions videos. Um, I have kind of like more to say about some of those other dolls now that I've worked with them a little bit but uh, maybe I'll do some follow-up videos for those. So this is the little purse that she comes with. It looks like a wicker basket, but it's kind of like the same rubbery material that some of their shoes are made out of. It's really nice, and it's attached with a piece of this faux leather strapping. And then she comes with this little bottle of wine. And I can't quite read that. It says wine from something. And then it has this really cool wolf head. It's like the stopper for the wine bottle is a wolf head. It doesn't come off or anything, it just stays she on. She also comes with her card. It's a pretty card. It's the same as all the cards. And she comes with a hair bow. But that's how it goes on. It's a little, you know, finicky, but it's pretty once it's on, if it's not like standing up in the air like it is right now. Um, and then I've also seen other people put it so that her short pieces are in front of the bow and that looks really cute too. Um, so that's what the bow looks like on her. <clears throat> and it is just a piece of the same cotton that a lot of her stock is made out of. It's like a cream cotton with an unfinished, um, kind of like a shabby edge. It has that kind of a, a elastic banding that you put, th that you use for making bracelets sometimes. And then a little piece of that faux leather on either side of it. It's a nice idea for a hair bow instead of a clip. So I'm going to talk about her stock outfit. I guess I'll kind of work my way from the top to the bottom. So she comes with this um, little neck piece that snaps on. And mine came with it on inside out. So my doll came with it looking like this. 
and I'll take it off to show you the difference. It comes off and on really easily. I thought it would be hard to put back on once it was off, but it was actually pretty easy. Um, <clears throat> so this is what it looks like. It's several layers of um, kind of ratty, gauzy type of uh, fabric in two different colors. And then it has this like line of sewing there. And that's, mine came like that. But look at the other side of it. It has this really pretty piece of lace and a little piece of ribbon that's kind of weaved in and out of the lace. It's really, really pretty. And I think it would look also very nice on her neck like this. So I guess it's kind of like a, a two, two different options, two different looks. I really like the look of this. I like the texture of wearing it this way. And then she comes with these little cuffs that go off and on her arm very easily and they're tied but they, you know, you don't have to tie them and untie them to take them off. I'll just show you the one for an example. And so it has all of these layers of, um, this feels like cotton, but it looks kind of gauzier than, this is cotton, and then this is like a gauzy type of a fabric. And then this is another light piece of that gauzy fabric. And then there's a cotton like cuff that comes down and covers the layers of ruffles and it has a little um, slit in it so that it opens up and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I really love the look of this. Love her sleeves. And then it's kind of like tied around and um, there's like a, a lace on like a piece of unfinished cotton that you could, I guess you could tie bow, but I really like the look of just the pieces dangling. It looks shabby and stuff. So the other, the other cuff is just like that one. <clears throat> put all of her pieces over there. And so this is her beautiful dress. It's gorgeous. And we'll talk about the outside layer, which is her apron. Her apron has this really cool picture of a wolf with some footprints. And the wolf was kind of crouched over. And it's made out of a thin piece, so you can see my fingers through it. It's a thin piece of cotton. It's also unfinished. All of the all of the fabrics are unfinished on this, except for the, the edge here is sewn. So the edge of her apron is sewn. And then there's another layer of, uh, I don't have this tied as tightly as I should. Um, so I'm going to take it apart right now and I'll tie it tighter next time. So there it is. So this is it. And these are the very, very, very long, long strings on it. So what I did when I put it on her was I wrapped it around her body like that and I wrapped that around her body like that and then I tied it here. So that's how you put it on her so that these strings don't go like dangling all behind her. <clears throat> it has a nice sewn ruffle edge where it comes at her waist. It has this, um, this almost looks like it's made out of cheesecloth and so it's very, very ratty and, and with lots of pieces of of um, thread hanging from it. It's very beautiful and shabby looking. I love it. Cheesecloth is great for having little strings and strands hanging from. It adds so much texture and interest to the front of her outfit. And that bow is just sewn into place so you don't tie this piece of, thank goodness, eh? that would be a nightmare to try to kind of tie a bow out of that stuff that's all raveling. Um, so it's all ready done for you. So that is the apron. And then she has this, this bodice, it's kind of like a um, corset and it's kind of, it has, it has, um, Laces here and laces there, but you don't have to lace it. They're just for decoration and they're, it's a pretty lace with nice little eyelets. I'll take it off the doll so that you can see it. Um, and how it is attached in the back is with these, more of those little hooks and they're hooked into pieces of thread as usual. So I'm gonna take this off and I'll show you guys the outer dress. You'll also get to see the inner dress. So this is the outer dress and it has this uh, piece of gauzy material that has been melted and put holes in it. 
I know that this is melting because I used to create some flowers using this kind of a technique and it makes your kind of material all pucker up like that. And another hole there. I, probably every piece of fabric is slightly different but it'll have like holes and little snags in it and stuff to make it look all like she's been running through the woods I guess. <laughs> Um, and then this is like a really soft fake leather. I mean, it really feels like real leather, but it isn't. Um, it's very soft and it feels quite a lot like, like actual leather. And then there are these eyelets. The under part of her skirt is just a really basic piece of cotton, like natural cotton fabric. It has two layers of cotton. It has like a shabby unfinished edge as well. So really beautiful. Lots of little details. I love the detailing on this because you don't even see this with the with the apron over it. So it's nice that they take the details, the time to put the details on things that are even covered. And so this is what she's left with at this point. <clears throat> she does have this tulle underskirt. So yeah, this is just your standard tulle underskirt with a cotton elasticized waist. It's got like a off-white, kind of almost like a pink un undertone to it. And then here's her really pretty uh, short dress that she comes with underneath of her um, Red Riding Hood outfit. And I love this outfit. It's my favorite outfit. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I will take it off of her just so that I can show it to you. I'm not going to take off her boots and her socks just because these boots look like they're going to be a pain to retie and put back on her feet, um, but her socks are really pretty. They're fishnet, and they have this really pretty cotton, again, cotton lace trimming on the top, and then they each have a little cream-colored or champagne-colored bow sewn to them. As I said on mine, this bow is a little loose. This is the first pull-up doll that I've had that I have no desire to redress. I only want her to be in her stock. <laughs> um, I'm going to take her dress off so that you can see it. She does come with a little cute pair of panties. It's a nice touch with a little, oh I didn't even notice. The um, They have like a little lacy edge on them and a little bow. They're really cute. So cute little panties. I'll cover her up. There you go. <laughs> um, so her little dress. It has these, this, these straps here, these laces. They're made out of a satin ribbon, a tiny thin satin ribbon, and they basically keep her sleeves from falling down off of her shoulders and you can tie them behind her neck or you could loop them around her neck and tie a bow in the front if you wanted it to look fancy. You can do all kinds of things with this but the way she comes is with it tied across the back of her neck and so you don't really see these these ribbons. They kind of hide behind her hair and it has a pretty gauze frilly trim And it has, um, I think this is called an empire waist, kind of goes up like that and then her, her bust kind of sits underneath of it. And it's almost, it almost looks kind of like it would be a baby doll type of a dress, but it's ruffled and fitted instead. Like it kind of, I think because it's squeezed by the stock outfit, it ends up having a fitted look, but it looks like it's made so that it could very easy, easily be like a baby doll type of fitting, which is loose and kind of like hanging down from the bust. Has these really pretty ruffles, three layers of ruffles, and everything is, you know, the inside of it is all, like it's got some of this tool just to make it stick out a little bit more on the bottom around her legs. And then the cuffs, the sleeves are puffy, just a little bit puffy, not like over the top poofy, and then um, the little shabby ruffle on underneath, sticking out underneath of the cuffs. So that's her dress. It does fasten in the back with Velcro. Her boots are 
you know, the faux leather type of fabric that a lot of boots are made out of, doll boots. And then they're laced up with this really thin black lace and they have little eyelets in them for the laces. Really pretty, it makes them look like real boots. And then the soles, they've got like a platform sole with a high heel. And they're well made, like there's not pieces of glue sticking out or anything or you know, they're they're not falling apart or anything at this point. And they've got like this detail on the back. It's just like a double edge sewn piece of fake leather. And so they're really nice. So take care and thanks for watching everybody.